بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد So in the last class, والحمد لله رب العالمين We began our discussion regarding الوصل والفصل in علم المعاني within the science of بلاغة And we've studied those instances where one has to mention الواو العاطفة between two sentences Okay, we mentioned two instances um, then we began our discussion regarding al-fasl and we spoke about one instance where a person has to mention or rather one instance where the wow al is not mentioned. It's obligatory to omit or delete it. Okay? And those sentences will be known as al-fasl. Okay, they refer to as al-fasl. And we said as a quick review that this first category is if there are two sentences that are connected to each other. And what we meant by connected is either the connection is via badal or bayan or what? at tawkid And we said that this, this first categorization is known as kamal al-ittisal. Yani there's complete connection between sentence one and sentence number two. Sah? Now in this class, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go into the second instance where is obligatory to mention or it is obligatory for a sentence to be al-fasl. And this is when one sentence is khabariya and the other is insha'iya. Basically what we studied in wasl. Okay. Here are the same examples we had previously. Qum akhuka qadim. Stand your brother is coming. We said qum is one sentence. It is in Sha'iya. Why? Because there's the Amr. Akhuka Qadim is the second sentence, right? And it's Khabariya. So, as a result, the Wow cannot be mentioned there. Likewise, Qul Huwallahu Ahad is in Sha'iya due to the command. Allahu Samad is Khabariya. Therefore, there's no Wow between the two sentences. Ja'at is Sayyaratu. Irkab fi Jawfiha. Ja'at is Sayyara is Khabariya. Irkab fi jawfiha is in sha'iya. Ida ja'a nasrullahi wal fatih, raayta al nasa yadakhuluna fi deen in lay afwaja, fasabih bi hamdi rabbika wa stagfir, in nahu kana tawaba. We discussed that as well. And this is the second category, and this category is broken out to A and B. Okay? A being that one sentence is khabariya, and B, the other is in sha'iya, or vice versa. Okay? And these are examples where the sentences are al-fasl. And the reason why we're not expounding on this particular category is because if you've understood when we explain al-wasl, where both of them have to match, both of them have to be either khabir or insha'iyah, then you've basically understood this portion as well. We had examples of this portion as well in the wasl. So we're not going to expound on that too much. Now, 2b is basically when there are two sentences that are not connected in meaning. Okay, so if sentence one and sentence two are not connected to each other in meaning, right, there's just two independent sentences in meaning, then it is obligatory to uh, omit the wow. The wow cannot be mentioned. The wow altifa is not mentioned. Here's an example. Aliyun katibun al-hamamu Ta'irun, al-hamamu, biduni at-tashdeed, biduni shadda. Okay, and the pigeon is a bird. Because if you put the tashdeed, you say al-hamam, then what that refers to is mawdi'ul ikhtisal, yani the place in which uh, a person showers or yani washes. Okay, takes a bath, etc. Anywhere where ikhtisal is going on. All right. But without tashdeed, it refers to a pigeon. Good. Aliyun is a writer, an author, a writer. The pigeon is a bird. Is there any connection in meaning between these two sentences? There's no connection, right? There's no connection whatsoever. So because there's no connection in meaning, the wow has to be omitted. The wow has to be omitted. Okay. And 
two A and two B are referred to as kamalu inqida. Kamalu inqida. Okay. Just as the first categorization is known as Kamal Ittisal, this is a complete connection. Here in this second category is Kamal Inqita, meaning that there is a breakage between the two sentences. There's a breakage. Either a breakage in meaning, which we have in 2B, or a breakage in wording, meaning there's no connector to connect it in wording. Okay, two sentences. Okay, like we have here. There's no, con there's no connection in wording that connects the two sentences together. Okay, there's an uh, inqidar from that aspect in wording. But in 2B, the inqidar is in meaning. Okay. So basically, if you wanted to like make like a tree, a uh, tashjir or a diagram, you can put al fossil here. And under fossil, you have kamal ittisal. Okay, and then you have Kamal and Inqidar. Okay, and we have a third one which we're going to study in the next category. But under Kamal Inqidar, you can break it down to two. Right, and this will be homework to make uh, this tajir, this this um, tree diagram of what we learned today, and then you provide examples for each. You have when the sentence, when one sentence is jumla khabariya and insha'iya, or insha'iya khabariya, and then you have here they are not connected in meaning. يعني بدون اتصال في المعنى Okay And it is uh, كمال اتصال of course You have three You have what? The, by, the بدل Example بيان Example Toki example. Okay, and this is for Al Fasl. And then the third category is what we're going to study now. You have Kemal Ittisal, Kemal Inqita'. And next you have number three. We have here Shibu Kemal Ittisal. Before we even get into that, let's explain what is the third characterization. Is when the second sentence, second, sentence number two, is a response to the first sentence. Okay. Uh, to provide more information regarding this title, we wrote here, due to the statements or events posed in the first sentence, there will be an implied question, okay, that results. There'll be an implied question that results from reading the first sentence, okay? What will happen then is that the second sentence that comes after the first sentence will answer that implied question. Okay, pay attention. If you don't pay attention, you're going to get lost. All right? So you have two sentences, okay? Sentence one, sentence two. When reading sentence one, there's a question that arises. There's an implied question that arises once you read that first question, that first statement, that first sentence. What sentence two does now is that it answers that implied question. Okay? 
طيب Let's take a look at some examples Here in Surah Yusuf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوء And I free not myself from the blame Verily the human self يعني the soul The nafs Is inclined to evil Or towards evil If you were to break down this ayah We have to identify the two sentences وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي is sentence number one إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ is sentence number two good now we said once you read sentence number one there is an implied question and that sentence number two will respond to that implied question okay what is that implied question that we read from وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي يعني why do you not free yourself from blame? You said you do not, you say that you, you free not, yani you do not free yourself from blame. Why? Why is that? Now comes sentence number two to explain why he does not free himself from blame. Because the nafs is inclined towards evil. You guys understand? And, for, and, and in this example, in this category, this is the reason why there's no wow attached between the two. You guys understand that? Okay, I just read your question. We're going to return back to it after explaining this, okay? But do you guys understand this so far? All right. Let's take a look at another example of Surah Tahud. This is heading number three, yes. Here in Surah Al-Hud, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, فَلَمَّا رَآ أَيْدِيَهُمْ لَا تَصِلُوا إِلَيْهِ نَكِرَهُمْ وَأَوْجَسَ مِنْهُمْ خِيفَةٌ قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ إِنَّا أُرْسِلْنَا إِلَى قَوْمِ لُوطٍ I just provide the ayah so that you can understand the context, okay? When the angels went to Ibrahim alayhi salam Okay And Ibrahim he slaughtered the animal The calf And he had his wife Cook it and served it To, the, to them but they did not Eat the food so Ibrahim Started to become you know, fearful Became scared like what's wrong with these people Then obviously They informed him That they were angels and they were going to destroy the people of Lut. Okay, they were going to destroy the people of Lut. Because of their transgressions, of course. The point we want to focus on is this part of the ayah right here. Okay. وَأَوْجَسَ مِنْهُمْ خِيفَةٌ قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ And he felt, meaning Ibrahim alayhi salam, from them apprehension. Yani khifa, meaning like fear. Okay. قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ Here we have two sentences. In the first sentence, when you read this first sentence, right? And he felt from them apprehension. Yani he felt there was some type of fear that entered into his heart. Now, when reading this first sentence, yani one may ask, why did he feel? Why did he feel that fear? Like, why, why did he become fearful? What's the reason he became fearful? Okay. Or one can also say another implied question that could arise from this is, what did they say? Yani, what did these angels say when they saw Ibrahim in the state of being fit? Yani, having fear in his heart. What did these angels say to Ibrahim? Sentence number two clarifies and tells you or answers your question, the implied question, or your question. Yani, what did they say? قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ They said, do not fear. Fear not. Okay? Here, the second question answers the implied question of, yani, what was their response to Ibrahim when they, saw, when they saw this fear from him? Okay? They said, fear not. Here, the second question answers the implied question. Okay? 
You guys understand that? And in this case, because Jumla, the second sentence, is an answer to the implied question, is an answer to the implied question, there is no wow in between these two statements. There is no wow within these two statements or between these two statements. Okay, therefore, this sentence, this ayah, is al fasl. It's considered to be al fasl. You guys understand? Now, this third category, as we mentioned earlier, will be known as what? Shibhu Kamal Ittisal. Shibhu Kamal Ittisal. Right, so if we were like re return back to this. Our little diagram here. We have Kamal Ittisal, where there's complete, there's a complete um, connection between sentence two and one, one and two. There's a complete, yani, Ittisal. Okay? We have category number two, which is known as Kamal Inqita, where there's a complete disconnect, either by wording, right? There's, no, there's clearly no wording there connecting the two sentences together. Or meaning, like Ali Yun Katim Al Hamam Mutair. Okay, in meaning, these two sentences have no uh, connection whatsoever. In meaning, all right. So you have Lafzi and you have Ma'nawi. Good. Now this third categorization is known as what? Shibhu Kamal Ittisal. Okay, Shibhu Kamal Ittisal. All right. Now, why is it known as Shibhu? Why does it resemble Kamal Ittisal? And why is it not actually Ittisal? The reason why it, it resembles Ittisal and is not completely yani, Kamal Ittisal is because, remember, sentence number two is responding to something that's not mentioned clearly in this in the in the statement right remember what it's answering it's responding to the implied question is the question written out is the question yani written out in the kalam no it's implied okay so because it's implied yani it's shibhu because you don't clearly see it that question being written out, you can't clearly see it. Um, this type, this category is classified as shibhu. It's similar to kamal itisal. Right? There's itisal going on, right? Everything is connected to one another. However, not all three parts are written, right? The, the implied question is not written. So therefore, it's shibhu. It's similar. Okay? And that's why it's called shibhu kamal itisal, the third category. Okay, where there's a yani jawab, there's a response to the su'al muqaddar, the implied question. All right. So basically, this will be the homework for this week, inshallah ta'ala, to make a chart similar to this and to provide um, examples for each, for each, um, you know, for each, for each category. All right, you guys understand this so far? Al Fasl is broken down to three categories. You have Kamal Ittisal, Kamal Inqita, and you have Kamal Ittisal, uh, Shibu Kamal Ittisal. And we only mentioned three so far, right? These are three categories of when a sentence has to be Fasl, meaning there's no wow mentioned between two sentences sentence one and sentence two. But in reality, subhanAllah bihamdi, there are 10 instances in all, and we only went over three. SubhanAllah, right? There's 10 instances. And um, the reason why we're not going to go over all 10 is because some of them are, are a bit rare. You won't find it a lot in the language, right? Some of them you won't find in the Quran at all. And two, this is the introduction to Balagha, right? So we're not going to provide 
want every single detail that exists regarding every single point. This is just an in introduction to get your feet wet. Okay, we're providing introduction to the science of Balaga. Once you finish the course, you study, you know, you can study Balaga again, and then you go into details. That's when you go into, you know, different details. Likewise, Nahu. Nahu provide introductory courses. Then once you master the introduction, you go into intermediate. Then you go into intermediate. You go into advanced. There's a progression, Yanni. There's a progression. Right? You don't take everything in one go. Okay? There's steps. All right? Just like a baby. A baby comes out of the womb. Does the baby begin eating, you know, eight-ounce steak, rice, a full chicken? Does a baby eat all this stuff? Is the stomach ready to intake that type of food? That food for adults? No, of course not, right? Rather, the baby has to begin with milk. And then eventually, Gerber or, you know, baby food. And then eventually move up, eat like, you know, more solid foods little by little. Until eventually it grows, he grows, he grows until he becomes an adult. And then at that point, that person is able to eat adult food. But if you give that baby adult food while that baby is still a baby, then guess what's going to happen? The baby's going to die. That's the reality. The baby's not ready for that amount of food. Likewise, the Talib al student of knowledge, the beginner student of knowledge, cannot begin their Talib, their studying, with yani, a lot of details. A lot of details. Rather, you're given, right? if you have a teacher, you're given... Uh, a, a basic, uh, you know, a basic understanding, with some details here and there. But as you progress in your talab, as you progress in your studies, that's when you start to learn those details. Just like the baby begins with baby food, you move on to people food, big people food. Likewise, a talib, talib al -in begins with the smaller issues and then moves up to the bigger issues. And this is the meaning of a rabbani, a rabbani. Yani someone who is a Rabbani, and we ask Allah Azza wa to make us from the Rabbaniyin. Ibn Abbas, he says that Rabbani is الذي يعلم, yani the one who teaches the small issues of knowledge before the big ones, the big issues. Okay? And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the Rabbaniyin. Ameen. So if you want to learn these other seven instances, then of course there's a time and place for that. However, what we're going to provide you, inshallah ta'ala, to get, you know, to get your feet wet, for lack of better terminology, we're going to provide you a couple lines of poetry, three lines of poetry. For whoever wants to memorize it, you can memorize it. If not, at least write it down in your notes so that later on when you study Balaga again, you will have these in your notes and it'll be benefit. Uh, these three lines of poetry, inshallah ta'ala, will help you in knowing seven, seven, not ten, the other three are a bit rare, but seven instances where fossil has to occur. Okay? So we're going to write it out for you guys. Let's write it down at the bottom. And these lines of poetry were shared by, to us by a Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Harari from the scholars of Mecca. Okay, so these three lines of poetry they say Fafsil Lada Tawkiri wal Ibdali Linuktatin Waniya Tisuani Wa Adam it Tashriki fi Hukmin Jara Awihtilafin Talaban wa Khabara Wa Fakdi Jami in Wama Ihami Atfin Siwal Naksudi fil Kalami. In these three lines of poetry here the Sheikh basically tells you the seven or seven he mentioned seven instances where there has to be fossil between jumnatain between two sentences first you have a tawkid tawkid is one then you have ibdal yani badal two then you have waniya to suali which is three and these three is what we what we study so far correct Four is going to be وَعَدِمَ تَشْرِيكَ فِي حُكْمٍ جَرَى 
four. Aw ikhtilaf and taliban is gonna be five, the fifth instance. Wa khabara. Wa fakti jami'in is gonna be six. Wa fakti jami'in. And wa ma'ihami is gonna be seven. So these three lines of poetry basically gathers for you, yani, to make it easy to recall these instances where fossil has to occur. Okay? We want to explain three, I believe, or four, maybe four. Yeah, we, we explain Adam and Tashriq fi hukm in jara as well, being 2B. Yani 2B is considered to be Adam and Tashriq fi hukm in jara. Five, six, and seven is not mentioned. We didn't explain it, okay? But just for, you know, future studies, inshallah ta'ala, when you study this topic again, you'll be able to um, understand them as well, as well as eight, nine, and ten, inshallah ta'ala, okay? All right, a student asks, in Bedal, in this case, Kamal Ittisal, Naam, it'll be Bedal Kul. Inshallah ta'ala. Al-Fasl is one sentence of Qawri and Shari. Inshallah, future courses, um, Inshallah ta'ala. We'll see, you know, we'll see. Right now, we're focusing on this semester. When Ramadan comes, we'll see what's going to happen with that. And next courses will be after Ramadan, and we'll discuss that, inshallah ta'ala. All right? So that's Al-Wasl al fasl Everyone understand this sign so far, this part of the um, uh, Ilm al-Ma'ani? It makes it a bit more interesting, interesting now, right? Now when you see a wow, or if you don't see a wow, now you're going to focus, subhanAllah, why is that wow mentioned there? Why is that while not mentioned, right? SubhanAllah, just one letter is going to cause hours upon hours upon hours, inshallah ta'ala, of contemplation of the Qur'an. May Allah make us of those who reflect and ponder over his book. Ameen. See how deep Arabic language is in general? Allahu Akbar. Tayyib. Now, the last thing we're going to speak about today, inshallah, and it's basically a, uh, yani an introduction. An introduction of the last portion of Ilm al-Ma'ani. And it deals with al-Ijaz, wal-Itnab, wal-Masawa. Okay? We're going to provide an introduction today, inshallah, and in the next class, we're going to go into details of each. Uh, hopefully, we'll finish that in the first portion of the class. And in the second portion, we'll begin with Ilm al-Bayan. Tayyib. So, as an introduction, um, what do we study in this section of Ilm al-Ma'ani? Basically, this section deals with the amount of words used to convey a meaning. Okay, the amount of words used to convey a meaning. So, stay with me. It is said, like the scholars of Balagha, they say that Al-Alfadhu thiyab al-Ma'ani That words are garments for intended meanings of speech. Okay, words are garments for intended meanings of speech. Okay? Al-Alfadhu Fiyab Al-Ma'ani. What does that mean? Take a look at an example. A person can wear a shirt. Okay? That shirt can be really short on them. Right? It could be really tight on them. Or it could be really big on them. Sah? Or that shirt could be the right size. Okay? So let's say a person wears a medium-sized shirt. The shirt can be extra large, the shirt can be extra small, or the shirt can be medium, okay, it could fit. Likewise, so this is in terms of a person wearing his different type of shirt. Likewise, when conveying meanings, yani the intent behind speech, then the meanings, al-ma'ani, will be the person. But the al-fad, yani the words that you use to convey that meaning, can be either the extra large shirt on that medium sized body, or it could be yani, extra small shirt on that medium sized body, or it could be the medium sized shirt on that medium sized body. It can fit just right. Okay? Sometimes you can use 
few amounts of words, yani summarize, or a lot of extra words, yani the extra large shirt, or just the right amount of words to convey a meaning yani of, of speech. Okay? And this is basically what we're going to study in this chapter. Yani al ijaz basically deals with those instances when few words, summer, the summary, yani few words are used to convey meanings. Yani there's summarization. The shirt is extra small on the body. Okay? Summarization. Al itnab, al itnab deals with those instances when a lot of words, yani there's extra words that are used to convey meanings, okay? The extra large shirt on that person, the medium sized body. And musawa deals with those instances where just the right amount of words are used, yani not too little, not too much, medium sized shirt on a medium sized body, okay? To convey the meanings, okay? And this musawa, of course, is going to be the yani, origin. Whenever you want to convey the meaning of a speech, you would, provide, you would use the right amount of words, right? You wouldn't add extra words, nor would you omit any, type, any words. Rather, you express what you mean with the right amount of words. Okay, and this is the origin. Are you? And this is basically essentially al ijaz wal itnab wal musawah. And this is what we're going to study in the next class, inshallah ta'ala. Those instances when there is summarization, there's something missing. Any summarization of kalam. And those instances where there are extra sentences. Why are there extra sentences? Okay? This is what we're going to study in the next class, bismillah ta'ala. If there's any questions, we'll take it now.